Until this team humbles themselves and they start caring more about football than Instagram likes and Twitter likes, they won't amount to a hill of beans. Great TV show, outstanding reality TV show. But as far as it goes for a football team, <laughs> are you kidding me? It has now been Saturday, Sunday, Monday, yep, today's Tuesday, four days, a whopping four days since the Colorado and Stanford game. I don't know why, but to me at least, it feels like that happened forever ago, but it just happened. And yeah, let's just come out and say it. I'll address the elephant in the room. It was an embarrassing effort. And that's the key word I'm going to emphasize and harp on, and we'll, we'll address that in just a second. Effort! An embarrassing show of effort in the second half onward. The first half was great, it was all fine and dandy, but somebody needs to remind these Colorado players, there's two halves in the sport. You want to know what gets me pissed off and what enrages me? Lack of effort. I can tolerate losing because you straight up suck and you're not talented enough to win the game because you're giving me your A plus or 100% effort, you're just not good enough to win. But when you're talented and you're not working hard and you're not giving the effort, no, that pisses me off. Nothing in this life enrages me more than lazy people, lack of effort, and these four and five star recruits or anybody that just ruins their life and throws their career away. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it, because most people out here would give anything for that golden opportunity. And I already know what some of you are sitting there saying, well Matt, you're being a little harsh, don't you think? And no, I don't, and this is a different video for a different day. And matter of fact, we'll talk about this tomorrow, Shadur Sanders was posting on his social media at halftime. I got a bone to pick with that. We'll talk about that on a different day. Whether it was actually Shadur posting it or his social media team, don't know. But it was on his account. So he's getting the blame for it. And you know what's funny? My granddad used to tell me this when I was growing up. He said, Matthew, don't count your chickens before they hatch. That's always a quote that has stuck with me. And Colorado did just that. You could see it in the players' faces. You could see it from the way they was walking out on the field in the second half. They thought they had the game won. They said, oh, yeah, we're big, bad Colorado. We got all these chains, man. We got all this name, image, and likeness. Yeah, Stanford, they might as well bow down to us. And guess what? Although that probably should have been true, although Stanford didn't even belong on the same field as you, they came in there in the second half, they walked out of that locker room and whooped your butt on national television. What about that? This has got to be the most humbling experience for any football team this year, and it's not even close. Swing of emotions, man. Swing of emotions. Colorado's already expecting that they're going to be 5-2. and two. They're sitting at the highest of highs on the mountaintop. And then Stanford goes out there and whoops your butt. You hate to see it. Or some people may love to see it. Now, as you all know, we do the live reactions right after the game. And I had a lot to say about this game. I believe the video we posted, it was 18 minutes long. And although I do enjoy the live reactions and it gives you my perspective on the game, that is my reaction as soon as the game is over. Right when it's over, most times right when it's going on. And a lot of times when I give you my live reaction and I say some stuff I don't agree with and when I go to bed and sleep on it, I wake up the next morning and watch the film, I change my opinion. Well, I've now had not one, not two, not three, but four days to sleep on and think about this Colorado effort in game against Stanford. And I've thought about this real carefully the past couple of days, but my opinion on this Colorado team hasn't changed too much from even six months ago. I'm going to bring it up. Do y'all remember in the offseason when I stated I got Colorado going five and seven and everybody, every single one of you killed me in the comments saying, Matt, you're tripping. We're going to do way better in five and seven. I'm not even going to sit up here and go on a rant and tangent about that because you're entitled to your own opinion and so am I. I predicted Colorado to go five and seven and all of you was like, no, nah, Matt, we're going eight and four. I saw some people saying nine and three, 10 and two. And what did I say? I respect your opinion, but watch. Watch how the season plays out. Fast forward in time and today's date, we're seeing it unfold in front of our eyes. And let me make this clear. I love Coach Prime. Y'all know this. Me saying Carl Rogers going 5-7, and seven, that has nothing to do with Coach Prime whatsoever. I'm not even going to get into all of this, but a lot of people have this weird mentality of, oh, if you pick against Coach Prime, you're a hater. Oh, if you pick Colorado to lose a game, you're hating on Dion. Uh, no. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but that's not how it works, buddy. Have you ever thought about this? When somebody picks Oregon or they pick USC to beat Colorado, maybe, and this just a maybe, is because they think USC to Oregon's a better football team. It has nothing to do with anybody out here hating, quote-unquote, it's not even hating, but people call it hating, hating, quote-unquote, Coach Prime. I am beyond sick and tired of that narrative going around. Although I love Coach Prime, and although I've been high on this Colorado team, I've seen so many other people catch backlash for not being high on them. But anyways, getting back on track here, sorry for the rant, I had Colorado going 5-7. and seven. Remember that? I'm sure y'all do. You know why I had them going 5-7? and seven? For simple re actually my bad, two simple reasons. Number one, they're not that good. They're not. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but Colorado's not a good football team. 
Number two, another reason I had them going five and seven is because they play in one of the hardest conferences in the entire country. You could also an argument say from top to bottom, they're the best conference in the country. With that being said, let's pull up their schedule. Because I know a lot of Colorado fans right now, you're sitting here going, oh, Matt, well, we're four and three. We're easily going to win that fifth game. And just like Lee Corso says, not so fast, my friend. Because, yeah, I do have you winning one more game, but that's it. From here on out, here's your next five opponents. You only have five more games, Colorado fans, five more games. You play UCLA, not this weekend, but next. They're in the top 25. You're not, and UCLA is a better team than you, and they will be favored in this ballgame. Just going off of analytics here, UCLA will win. Fast forward time to the week after. You know who you play? 12th ranked Oregon State. You will not be favored in that one. Not even going to be close. Going by the analytics, that's two losses. Fast forward time to the following week. You play an Arizona team who is thriving. They are hitting on all cylinders, and they will be favored in this ballgame. And they are better than you. Arizona's 4-3, and three, but guess what? They played USC closer than you did, and they also played Washington really close. Arizona will be favored by probably two or three points in that ballgame. On the 17th of November, you play Washington State. At Washington State, you will not be favored by the analytics. And last but not least, you play at Utah on the final regular season game, and we all know this, you won't be favored in that one either. You play five more games, and in these next five games, I think you'd be extremely fortunate to go two and three. That's best case scenario. You won't win three out of five games. Not going to happen. Unless something changes in that locker room within the next couple of weeks, can't happen, won't happen. Now, with that being said, here's worst case scenario, and this could happen. Like I said, you won't be favored in any of these games. You're going to go 0-5, worst case scenario. Realistically speaking, though, I'll give you one, and I did do this in the offseason. I will do it again. You go 1-4, and four. realistic. And well, 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 where does that lead you? Back to what I said six months ago. You're going 5-7. and seven. Whether you like it or not, Colorado fans, you're going to have to come to terms with reality. You're not good. You're decent at best, and you're fortunate to be 4-3 and because you should have lost to Colorado State, and you almost lost to Arizona State. I could do this all day. You're one play away from losing to TCU. Let's cut the crap. In the first three games, you start out 3-0. and I'm not going to say you got lucky because you made the clutch in big-time plays. But what has happened is, ever since that 3-0 start, is these Colorado players, they've gotten cocky. That's all it is. The media's hyped them up, and they have somehow, somewhat convinced themselves they're better than what they actually are. When in reality, you're a decent college football team, at best. Nobody's scared of you. Stanford wasn't. Stanford's one of the worst teams in the country, and they beat you. You almost lost to a group of five team in Colorado State. And here's what I want y'all to understand as a person who's watched the games. Colorado hasn't looked good since the Nebraska game. They played bad against Colorado State. They got embarrassed by Oregon, didn't play good against USC. They played awful against Arizona State, and they played even worse against Stanford. Yeah, you won the Arizona State game, but that's one of the worst teams in the Pac-12. And even Coach Prime said after the game, yeah, we got a lot to work on. We sucked in this game. I want y'all to understand this is much more than just losing Stanford. It has nothing to do with that. You're not playing good football. And I already know some people are going to try to say, oh, well, Matt's switching up. I ain't no switch up here, boss man. I had you going five and seven before the season even started. I never for a split second thought this was a good team. Y'all know this. This is nothing more than a rebuilding year, and Colorado fans are finding that out the hard way. And as much as I love Coach Palm, he's finding that out the hard way as well. He's already made it clear. He said, no, this ain't no rebuilding season. We're trying to go 12-0 and win every single game. I get it. But guess what? Your defense is awful. Your defensive coordinator is even worse. Your offensive line's atrocious. Your best two players is Shadur Sanders and Travis Hunter. That's really the bright side to this team. And when Shadur Sanders and Travis Hunter aren't playing their A-plus game like they weren't against Stanford in the later half of the game, is a recipe for disaster. Something's got to change. There's got to be other players step up. Travis Hunter doesn't need to be playing as much as he has been playing on the defensive side of the ball. If you want to let him play offense and defense, cool, but he can't play 100 reps a game. He ain't built like that. As good as he is, he got killed by Elick Ayo Manor. That's all I got to say, man. Whether you like it or not, Colorado fans, you're going to have to come to terms with reality. You're winning five to six games this year. That's it. Until this team humbles themselves and they start caring more about football than Instagram likes and Twitter likes, they won't amount to a hill of beans. Something's got to change. To me, at least, it's nothing more than entertainment. It's pure TV. When I watch Colorado, I don't get the sense and vibe that I'm watching a real deal college football team. I just don't. But it makes for great TV and it makes for a great watch. I love watching Colorado play. All their games have came down to the wire. Great TV show. Outstanding reality TV show. But as far as it goes for a football team... 
Are you kidding me? It's a complete joke right now. It's a flat out joke. You're lucky you got a bye week because if you didn't, I'd probably pick UCLA to beat you about two or three touchdowns this week. But you got a bye week, you can fix some things. That's all I got, man. Let me know your thoughts down below. But uh,